So for a while now, I've been really struggling with what I wanted to do next for the car, as far as content goes anyway. You know, what, what do I want to, what mod do I want to do that I want to film and I want to kind of upload? It's been close to a couple years since I've uploaded anything on the car. Now, in that time span, I have done some mods, but a lot of those mods have been covered extensively on YouTube or online, and I just didn't really feel like retracing those steps with, with extra video. So when I sat and thought about it, I said, you know, I haven't done anything to the interior of the car yet, and I've always wanted to do some seats. So I hopped on Mash tomorrow, I started looking at Brahm seats, and I fell in love with these. So today, we're going to unbox and install some Brahm seats on the 335 IS. Welcome back. Please find the sliders at the bottom of the box. They're underneath the cardboard piece below the seats. Our installation guides are located at bromracing.com. Good to know. All right, so for the big reveal on color here. You guessed it, red. Let's get a better look at these. Yeah, these are definitely red. But you know what? I think I like them. So what we're looking at, these are Brom Racing Alpha X Series and Red Cloth. Let's go ahead and unwrap them here. Very nice. So these bottoms are kind of reminiscent of the G80 seats. It's pretty cool. Hey, these are nice seats. And on the back, looks like we got some leather, pleather, leatherette, whatever you want to call it. Soft, like a faux carbon fiber look. Pretty cool. And the Braum logo there. Now these are reclining, which is an added benefit. I really like the ability to be able to adjust them. As promised, we got our slider handle, the brackets, or the sliders. Now there are some brackets, platforms, whatever you want to call them, that I ordered separately that I have, and I'll unbox those too. The whole combination, each sheet should weigh anywhere from 30 to 35 pounds, urging by my info which, you know, the factory seats probably weigh 65, 70 pounds. So we should save 60 to 70 pounds of weight with this modification. So I'm pretty excited. Okay, so I know I'm going to get some people that are going to ask, why red? I'm going to get some people that like it, some people that don't like it, but let me explain. So if you've ever seen my past videos, if you've seen my car on Instagram or Facebook groups or any of that stuff, you know my car is murdered out. It's all black. Now, an all black car, when it's done right, will always have a special place in my heart. I, I love it, but you know, my car has been in that configuration for a couple years now, and maybe there's a little bit of complacency I'm developing with the way it looks. So, like I said, I was on Mash Tomorrow, I saw these seats, and I fell in love with them. But then a couple of days later, I actually had a video recommended in my feed uh, from a guy named Tukes. Tukes, you may know him, he's the host of Street Alpha Podcasts, a car podcast on YouTube. It's great, check it out. But his personal channel, he has an A90 Supra. It's blue. It's a beautiful car. And he put these exact seats, exact color in his car. And I said, that settles it. Looks so good. I have to do it. So that's the rhyme and the reason behind why I chose these seats and this color. So let's go ahead and get them installed. I went ahead and put the car in the lift. I figured it'd be easier to take the heavy factory seats out at waist level. So we'll go ahead and tackle this. As far as what you'll need, it's really simple. You just need a T50 Torx for one, two, three, four bolts. You just move the seat back and forth to access all four. You'll need a pick tool and a screwdriver for the wiring harnesses underneath. There's, uh, on my car anyway, there's two wiring harness or two tiny little wiring plugs actually. Uh, I think there's maybe one or two wires pinned in each. And then the, the main harness. Uh, also, at some point, we're going to have to figure out <laughs> how to not have a seatbelt buzzer going and probably code out airbag lights. So we'll get into all that at the end of the video. Well, it's the next morning. I wanted to quickly show off my wife's new E36 M3 convertible in Hellrot. It's an automatic car. She didn't want a manual, but I think this is probably the best spec for these cars. It is a Survivor, so it only has about 80,000 miles on it. She's put a couple thousand on it since she got it in the uh, spring but I wanted to show it off. Not sure if I'm gonna do any content on the car because um, we're gonna to try to keep it as stock as possible, but I'll probably do you know, garage type restoration on some of the stuff that's broken or that's worn out, but still cool car, I wanted to show it off. I actually also have another rare BMW that I'm gonna have in the next few days, and when I get that, I'll make sure to show it off as well. So last night I got both seats out, driver's side and passenger side. 
I wanted to show where we're at with regard to transferring over some of the factory items, in particular, the seat belt. So it rides right here. This is a T50 Torx, take it out, and then you're just gonna trace the wire down to this uh, connector where all of these little sub-connectors kind of ride inside of this channel, they stack. So in order to get them out, what you'll do is you lift this, I can see it, this tab here, and then you'll push with a pick tool and they'll all just kind of slide out. And what you're looking for is this kind of gray L or R shaped one, whatever you want to call it. And then once you remove this, you can transfer this to the seat bracket and then we'll plug this in to its home here on this yellow connector. And what that'll do is that'll eliminate us having any issues with uh, seat belt chimes, warning lights, codes, all that stuff. Now, as you know, there are airbags in the seats that are eliminated with the racing seats. So we're gonna get some codes on that as well. And they are gonna pop up some dash lights. As I've mentioned in previous videos, I'm a stickler for that. So I don't want any of that. So I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to code all of those things out with Pro Tools. I've watched a few videos and from, from what I gather, it should be pretty straightforward. When we get to that part, I'll go ahead and show the process. All right, next thing I'm gonna do here is kind of clean this all up since I have both seats out and then we'll get to moving the new seats into the car. Once we remove the OEM seats, uh, we'll be putting these platforms in place, uh, seat brackets in place. And what we will then do, I believe, is we're gonna put the sliders that came with the seats, we'll put these on here, and then we'll, of course, mount the seats onto the sliders. Uh, so these brackets right here, I believe, are probably going to be for the seat belts, uh, but we'll take a look at that and see if I'm correct once we get them in the car. Okay, so I'm skipping right to where I have the sliders on the seats here just to kind of explain it because it's not really self-evident when you just look at it. When I've looked at any other videos or if I go on the Brahms website, they don't really have any pictures or videos in their instructions. It's more written. So you're kind of still left guessing a lot. So I figured I'd just film this part. So uh, these six millimeter cap head screws come on the seats here. And these are the sliders. These are springs right here, you can see, and this is what actuates the two components. And then this bar here kind of clips in on both sides. So you'll use this bar, clip it in here, and kind of move it so that you can actuate the spring to move the slider in and out so that you can access the bolt holes. Now this is the front of the seat. I went with the first bolt hole here and here, obviously. And then I believe it's the second bolt hole, which you can't see because the slider's down here in the back of the seat. And then what I had to do is compress this uh, bar here. I don't have the other one out or I'd show you because it was spread out more wide than the seat actually is. So they're probably, I don't know, kind of a, a one size fits all, but you just kind of squinch it down once you have the brackets on and you just clip it here and here. And when you're sitting in the seat, this is what you'll pull up on. It's a manual seat and it'll allow you to slide back and forth. All right, so I have the brackets on the sliders. I think I have them mounted the correct way. Now, what I will say is you may find that there are different companies out there that make brackets for seats and for different cars. These particular brackets I got with the seats when I purchased them from Mashamaro. It looks like it's a company called Planted. They are also labeled driver and passenger side. Uh, so this is the driver. So this seat right here is the passenger side. And you'll notate that by the reclining arm being on the door side. So this would be the passenger door. And then that bracket I showed you over here will be where the seat belt mounts to, hopefully. Um, so if we look at the holes that work on these particular brackets, these planted brackets, it's gonna be these corners right here. See if I can get in there and then there. So these are gonna be the bracket holes that you use. I'm gonna also go ahead and mark the other one so that it's easier when I go ahead and put everything on. But at the end of the day, it's really trial and error. You wanna make sure you get the seats on straight and centered. So always just remember that this bracket where the seatbelt goes and this reclining handle, if you're using these seats or any other reclining seats, should be on opposite sides. And just make sure you have the driver and the passenger seat oriented correctly. Something else just dawned to me. So if you've ever removed the seats from a BMW, you know that it uses a Torx bit, at least it does on the E90X chassis. Uh, I believe it's a T50 to take the factory seatbelt out. Well, there's no place for you to put a Torx bit through here, and this is a very tight space. 
So I actually took one of the bolts out uh, from my car and you can see that if you were to put it in here, you'd either have to have a very small Torx bit to stick in through there to tighten it up, or you can go do what I did, which is go out and buy uh, a few, eight to be exact, uh, I believe they're M10 by 1.5 hardened bolts and yeah, with about the same length here uh, so that you can get a wrench in there. So that's going to be my fix because I'm almost certain that if I were to try to put these back in, there's no way for me to get the Torx bit in there to tighten things down. So just keep that in mind if you're installing this particular setup. seats are in and I gotta tell you I really do like them so these seats are absolutely out of my comfort zone and a few years of mod that I probably never would have done but I'm now happy that I did with that being said like every other mod it comes with some downsides so I want to talk about some of the things that I don't like but I'm really nitpicking here and I think some of it is actually fixable so the first thing is when I bought these seats like I said they have the sliders allows for adjustability and they are reclinable now that reclining feature helps because the sliding feature really doesn't work in this car in fact these seats the way they sit right now which aren't even sitting back further than the door pillar are actually in the furthest back recline position and they can't go much forward because the leg bolster on both sides hits the center console so if you're a shorter person and you're hoping these seats are going to bring you really close to the wheel these probably aren't the seats for you now another issue that I'm facing is, is that this bottom part portion of the seat sits a little flush and I like it to kind of come up. I like my legs to kind of be up at an angle. It's just the seating position I like. Now I think I have a fix for that. The kit comes with these 10 millimeter spacers. In fact, the driver's seat, you can't see them under here, but I have four of those in each corner. I have one in each corner um, that, are, that are in this seat now. So in fact, the driver's seat is sitting up 10 millimeters higher than the passenger seat. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the spacer from here so that the bracket sits flush with the floor. And then I'm gonna keep this 10 millimeter spacer here and I'm gonna transfer those other 10 millimeter spacers to, between the slider and the bracket so that I have 20 millimeters. This seat up front will be sitting 20 millimeters higher than the rear. And I think that'll give me the elevation in the front of the seat that allows for my legs to be a little bit more comfortable. Now, I've put a couple hundred miles on these seats, and I gotta tell you, from a comfort standpoint, they, they are pretty comfortable. I don't know that the bolstering is any better than maybe the factory seats, but one area I would say is definitely something you wanna consider is this lower bolster area. In fact, the further you have the seat reclined, the more this pokes out, and there's no adjustability for it. There's no bladder of air in there that you can adjust or any of that. So if you have lumbar issues, this seat might not be the best for you, but again, this is something I'm nitpicking on. So with the seats being in and knowing that I can maybe drill some different holes in the bracket to put the seat further back. I guess basically what I'm saying is there is some ways that I can customize it a little bit more. I'm really happy with the mod. Okay, just got in the car. We got restraint system malfunction and airbag and seatbelt light. So let's go ahead and get in the Pro Tools and get that sorted out.
Okay, so it's the next morning, and yesterday I struggled trying to get the airbag and seatbelt lights to coat out. Um, I worked on it all afternoon and into the evening. Got to a point where I'm a little frustrated, so I made some posts on the Facebook groups, and I finally got one person in particular that reached out, was willing to kind of hold my hand through it. His name's Alberto Omar Garcia Salazar. He has a company down in Puerto Rico. It's called Euro Division PR. I'll actually throw a screen grab of his Instagram page now because he was super helpful. Uh, so he hopped on Facebook Messenger with me and he held my hand for about 10 to 15 minutes and walked me through how to do it the correct way. He basically looked at the codes and said, okay, here's how we tackle these. So kind of just quick summary of what we did. So we just went into the airbag module, coding, edit coding, And then we went into expert after we reset everything back to factory. So that was that's important. He had me reset everything back to factory to kind of reset everything that I had messed with yesterday. So once we were back to factory, we went into expert and we did the, let's see, we started off with disabling the side, left side airbag one, left side airbag two, left headrest, right headrest. And some of these will be disabled. Once you disable one, it kind of disables a couple of the other ones. So if you see some stuff that's disabled, that's why. Just kind of scrolling through these. There's a lot of them. And then OC31, which is seat occupancy detection. And then the last two were SPSBF underscore one. That's passenger seat position sensor. I thought the other one was up here. Could be wrong. Yes, SPSF underscore one underscore CD, which is driver seat position sensor. Once we got those done, the lights came off. So if I start the car. Okay, so you see the seatbelt light. But all I gotta do is just put my seatbelt on. So yeah, that actually ended up requiring a lot more time than I thought it would to code out the airbag and seatbelt warning indicators. But thankfully I was able to find someone within the community to share their knowledge, help me get squared away in an area that really isn't one of my strong suits. Thanks again, Alberto. So that'll conclude this video. And I gotta say, I'm happy to finally have a new video up after such a long hiatus. And I'm really happy with the way the seats turned out. I'm glad I did that mod. In the coming weeks, I'm gonna do a video on a new car I just got that I'm gonna to add to the channel. We're gonna do some maintenance and other stuff to it. But we'll cover that when that video drops. In the meantime, take care, everybody. Talk to you next time.